Previously on Cold Fear. You're out of your mind, woman! Don't get yourself killed. Shit! Hello and welcome back, and I'm just going to take a moment here to say this is a particularly nice looking cutscene, especially when Tom stands up and has a look around. Wasn't that lovely? Anyway, back to the adventures of everyone's favourite fuck-up. Not satisfied with killing the main girl, he's actually got himself raped by an exocell, and that's why we've got very low health and we're pretty much fucked. Perhaps we should be making our way inside. Now, the obviously, the big door there in front of us is where we need to go, and we can't get there straight away. We've got a little break here, which Tom, for some reason, is totally incapable of climbing up. Not really much else here um, as we're, where we're standing. We've got the, this, uh, the Eastern Spirit to our side, which is totally fucked. Everyone's favourite whaler slash research laboratory. Well, we have to say goodbye to that now. We're never going to see it again. You know, what we need to do is to get around the other side of this little platform thingy-majig here. That involves getting past these crashing waves. And because we've got low health, we can't even take a single hit. But luckily, with a little bit of timing, we can make it past without really all that much trouble. Wherever you start in this particular area, you can try running straight towards this part to get around a bit. They've timed it so that um, if you leg it there straight away, you'll get hit by the first wave uh, every time. And it's, you, you, you always have to wait for it to happen. Something else you might have noticed is that every now and then, the platform itself shakes a little bit, I'm guessing from uh, the impact of the waves. It's enough to make Tom stumble around, and if you're standing near the edge of a platform, it can be enough to just kind of tip you over. This Korean thing's um, a good place to show that off. We'll shimmy our way along the side of it, and we'll see pretty soon that it'll happen once again. And it's also a good way to find out that that little shake can... It actually does move you around, and it can clip you into objects, which is not something that generally happens in this game. Here we're stuck inside part of the crane. The shake has just clipped us inside of it. It's, it's quite easy to get back out again, but it's interesting that we can get knocked in that way. And once we have made our way all the way around, we can drop down that little bit that was stopping us from getting up. And of course that means we have to go all the way around again. Okay, it's time to get nitpicky. Let's look at the ship's position, and you can see that we've come in almost beside the platform itself. But if we look at the FMV from the end of the last video, you can see that we're actually heading almost at 90 degrees from where the ship has ended up. We do crash in the right place. But when we look over here and we can see those bridges leading over to the other part of the oil rig, you can see in this we're actually heading straight towards that. And just to make sure that we haven't hit the platform and then sort of leaned over towards it, you can see here that the crew's nest is perfectly vertical. I'm a nitpicking bastard. So anyway, before we go, we're not going to be able to come back here again, so we're just going to take a last sweep over this area and then look at some concept art for this particular part. Here we have a view of the crash ship itself, looks very nice. And also some exterior views of the oil rig, this is a nice one. And this one here is it's pretty cool, but it's part of it is actually based on a, a real image, which according to the internet appears to be just a normal stock photo of an oil rig. And finally, just a wireframe shot to show just how much is actually going on here. There's we've actually got two full exteriors here to look at as well as the ship, and then all this water as well. Also shows just how fast the water is going too. That must be very dangerous to be in. Certainly wouldn't expect anyone to have fallen in to still be there. You'd be just swept away. I mean, I'm still confused at how Tom actually got back on the platform, but... Mm. Well, here's the dock elevator, so let's pop inside. Mm. Well... Elevator, I guess. We've got a blood stain over there, that's no good. This leads to the main drilling module. And the one on the opposite side goes to the scientific module. The damn thing's stuck. Oh, uh, well, maybe it would help if we actually raised the elevator first. It doesn't really make um, that clear to us. So we'll hit the switch and relax, because we are obviously in a very safe place. Ah! Ah, to you too! 
I think that's supposed to be a mix between some sort of scream and screeching metal. The elevator itself has come to a stop and I think that's what it was supposed to be. But it's meant to trick you into thinking you're being attacked when, when quite clearly we're, we're fine and dandy. So where will we go first? Well, we're going to go the wrong way first. We're going to go outside to the scientific module. And as you can see, that's the bridge that during the FMB cutscene that Tom and Anna jumped onto and then Anna fell from. If we look over the edge, this is where we should be seeing the ship, but they didn't bother to put it in for this particular bit of the level, which is fair enough, I guess. I mean, we should be able to see that from here, but we can't. Yep, it should be right down there. Oh yeah, you see these pipes over there? These are also in the FMV cutscene. And I think that's nice attention to detail. Whoop. And we're hanging in empty space. Yay, collision boxes. And now we're standing in empty space. I knew there was something wrong. He's a witch! We trundle our way to the end of the bridge. We find that we can't get across. How frustrating. So to make up for it, here's some concept art. We managed to make an actual quite a good copy of that concept art as well. All, all the extra bits are all there. You can of course try and fall off and you end up kind of clipping through the bridge there. And you also have to make sure that you're careful where you hang off the edge. Because if you hang off over here, you'll fall immediately to your death. I was not happy to find that one out. Well, there's not really anywhere else to go, so we might as well head back. We can take a kind of look around. See, it's got a very nice satellite dish on top. That's a nice touch. And the other side's got some nice stuff too. Oh, that's nice. Down her back. Now, the vast majority of this we'll, we're never going to actually get to. There, there's all sorts of areas and pipes and sort of platforms and stuff we'll never get to, but it does. It's great attention to detail. I really do enjoy it. I just wish there was a way to get over there and have a look around, even though there's nothing there. Let's try the door over to the, well, the entrance, I guess, which is down below us. Damn thing's stuck. Doesn't work. Um, and if we try the elevator button, it's out of order. Doesn't work either. It looks like there is, like I said, there's no way to get back. So for the sake of it, let's have a look at things in wireframe mode. Look around. See everything's all made of wires and frames, and we can see the rest of the elevator shaft up above us. So we'll hit the switch, and up we go. And here's a question: Are we moving, or is the shaft moving? If it were me, I would probably build the elevator static and then move the elevator shaft around it just because it's it's easier that way. I'm not exactly sure if this game has the... it, it can cope with moving platforms. There's an example of one later on, but uh, well, we'll see. Okay, let's move on to the main drilling module. Hello? Ah! how much health I've got left. It's the tiniest sliver. I'm surprised I'm still alive. Let's have a look at that. Um, if we just don't move when we come out, we catch fire and we just die there and then. But if we aim and take a swing, it means our character model leans back a little bit and we actually miss the guy setting us on fire. And if we do it again, but we just aim and, and don't do anything else, he still dies right before he touches us. So if you come through the door and don't do anything, you burn to death because you're slightly, you're just close enough to his death point to, to die. Anyway, looking over the edge, we can see that we're, we, we are indeed above the water, quite high up above the water. And if we look over here, we have a missing back face on this part of the geometry. I would say it's sloppy, but who the hell is going to look up here other than me? Let's get moving then. Uh, oh, see that? That's, ah, I remember that from the ship. Yeah, it sets out a little burst of gas. It doesn't actually hurt us at all. Here's what happens if we just run past it. Oh, you see that little lean? Here it is again at like, I don't know, like 25% speed or something. Just so you can appreciate the fact that when the jet of gas hits him, he leans away from it and then leans back. I think it's a really nice touch. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, I think we know what's going to happen here. Uh, the way I play this game is that I kind of instinctively pretty much always in the over the shoulder sort of angle and I always miss bits like this where the camera goes to a special angle and then something happens and usually I have to go back and play things a second time to sort of make sure I haven't missed any. And here's some concept art of that platform we just walked across including the steps up at the end to where we are now. Listen closely for the gunfire. 
It's not coming from the door, it's coming from around here. Eventually it tapers off and stops. We'll get to that shortly. We also managed to pick up some health. Now that's made our perilous life situation a lot less important. <laughs> it would have been nice if they had some sort of cap or made sure you didn't pick up any health at all during this, but no, they didn't go with that. Armory. I think we know what to expect here. Got a cabinet here with a bunch of bullets. We've seen concept art for this before. We know kind of what it looks like. Not only one, we've got one, two, three, four over there, and then these ones are doubled in the other side, so that's seven containers of ammo. You may also have noticed that Hansen lost all of his weapons during the fall, which is at least one way of resetting things back again. I mean, there's been worse ways that things have been done like this. This one's got some boots. I want some boots. Still, no one ever really likes to have their weapons taken away. It just means that they kind of run out of ideas for weapons. But as you'll find out in this very episode, there's still more up this game's sleeve when it comes to weapons. Oh, those, those look like flash grenades. Um, uh, well, I'm not going to cock these. No, we don't get to use flash grenades. We don't get to use grenades of any kind, so no, don't get your hopes up. We've also got some more in this cabinet as well. I don't know why they put them in, because it really is annoying that you can see them and you just can't take them. Up behind us here, we've got an open vent, and if we step back far enough, we get some lovely graphical issues with it. Again, that's all down to using the flashlight on it. And I just want to switch to wireframe to point out just how detailed the upper portion of this room is. Um, it's something you, you really wouldn't notice unless you were actually looking out for it, but it does look pretty good. Right, let's move on. Um, oh yeah, we got raped by an exocell, didn't we? We're, we're, we're pretty much fucked. Maybe we should, yeah, we should go into the sick bay. Stay back! I'm with Anna. Help me. You're alive. Good. There's only a little time to inject the antidote after infection. So now tell me whose life I just saved. You know Anna, yes? No. She's gone. I'm Tom Hansen, USCG. You bring terrible news. Did she tell you about this place at all? No. And yet you came here anyway. Then I must tell you. Kamsky and his father and I were sent here to study the exocells when they climbed up onto the platform. Maybe the drilling woke them up, eh? We were told to learn what they were and how to control them. But Kamsky went past that. He wanted to use them. And this is the result. It will kill us all. Where's this radio jammer I heard about? And the Chenkwit kept it in the magnetic field room. You can't get in. It has retinal scanner locks. And only an Echenko can open it. Then I guess I'll just have to ask him to open it for me. He'll kill you first. Well, that was a lot to take in. Oh, spear gun. Am I glad to see you again? Right, we need to be finding Anashenko, but we're first going to look at the title screen. Listen to the music. And also the mouse pointer is a radar blip. Right, so why did we do that? That's because this part of the level has um, sort of a reprise of this theme, um, so I'm going to walk around and you can listen. It's one of the more relaxing pieces of music in the game, but let's talk about this guy. Now the concept art says his name is Ekimov, but it is in fact not. It is Dr. Pavel Bakarev, and he's the guy who invented not only the spear gun, but the antidote to the whole exocell infection thing. He's probably the only useful guy in the entire place. And also, he has the worst fucking haircut. It reminds me of this. He never mentioned you to me. The truth is, Mrs. Murdoch, John has been coming to see me for quite some time. He has been grappling with feelings of betrayal stemming from our marital difficulties. That's of course Kiefer Sutherland in Dark City, in the worst haircut I've ever seen in my life. And I was really pissed off when I played the game and saw that there was a character with the same fucking haircut. I can't stand it. Only two doors out of the place, one of them is stuck, so we have to go back the way we came. Vincent, one more thing. Yeah? You need to- ah! Ah! 
well then. One thing to point out is that sometimes the game will switch off all the lights around you, including the light on your gun, so you can't use it and I tend to get lost and things like that. It must do it for effect, but sometimes it ends up being more annoying than anything else. Gonna have a look in wireframe of Pavel getting all chomped up and then thrown back. We don't see anything actually attacking him at all, but I like to think that it saw his haircut and then threw him back because it was disgusted as I was. So what do we get this time? We have another SCART adapter and this one is the key to the storeroom. Now the storeroom is further on down the line and we would have gone this way initially but we'll get to why we didn't in a second. Now it's time for some awesome camera work. Ooh, shotgun, give me that. Ah, fuck! Here's why we didn't go this way the first time. If we get hit by it, we just die pretty much straight away. That's not fun. Or we can shoot the corpse in the head and that kills the exocell and it won't spawn. But give me that shotgun. No, not spear gun ammo. And shotgun. Right, let's go for a run. We're gonna walk around this sort of tube thing here, cylinder, I don't know what it is. It would have been nice if they had a sweeping camera to sort of show you running around, like whenever we were dodging the water down below. That would have been cool if we had it here, but we don't. So whenever we get to the end of the catwalk here, we find what seems to be the end result of that gunfire we heard. And also that jet of steam. If we flip to wireframe, we'll be able to see how they managed to do this. All they did was get one of the entities for spawning steam and just hid it behind the grate. And uh, we can actually also shoot it as well. So moving on, the shiny over there is actually the AK-47. We're managing to get all our weapons back pretty quickly. Add it to the arsenal. And if we move ahead, we'll actually trigger ourselves a little bit of a confrontation. Well, that wasn't so bad. Anyway, we need to move on here to the end of this particular walkway and that takes us inside to the door and that leads to the storeroom. Now, if we had come here before Pavel got killed and we didn't pick up the storeroom key, it would have said this. I have to find a magnetic card. As you might expect, but we've got it so we can go and see what the storeroom has in store. Hmm. Nope, oh, this looks ominous. Pretty ominous music as well. And some bodies around. I think we're gonna have to do a bit of head stomping. What's in here? Hello? Huh? Music's really picking up. Oh, another open container. I ah! Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck! Totally didn't expect that guy to trigger so fast. Usually he's he's about halfway down in that container and spawns whenever you're well past and he kind of comes up behind you. And here's something weird. I switched to my pistol and then somehow that, I, th I don't know if it was a light or what, maybe something clipping through the container, but it's managed to trigger him and he's coming for me. It's very weird. Got a flight of steps there and that's where we need to go but we'll come back to that in a minute. First we're gonna have a, a bit of a hunt around. We can at least get our bearings as far as the containers go and we'll get to see what the place looks like. Pretty big, I mean it's just a bunch of shipping containers and things like that. There's a hole in the ceiling where the things come down from, but we'll get a better look at that later on. You can see that there's some structural damage to things, and that's caused by this container having um, been dropped or at least smashed against something. Uh, 
And over here in the corner, we've got a random bit of detail. We've got a pair of bloody handprints on the wall. It's an oddly specific detail. Here's the door out, and as you might expect, it's locked. We've still got a little bit more to do. And that involves going back to those uh, steps that we saw before, and we're going to climb up those and have a look around. That ends up taking us up one level, and we can at least get the chance to survey the area from above. Across the way from us is another catwalk, which we can't reach, and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, over there in the corner, behind those shipping containers, there's a little bit of smoke, but there's actually something else that we can't see no matter where we stand. Speed it up and get all the way over there, and if we flip into wireframe mode, we can see that there's in fact a doorway and a corridor there. Now we never come in or out of that, so it's kind of just there for fluff. And since we can't actually see it from anywhere, it just it, it makes me really want to know what it looks like. But we, like I said, we can't get up there, so we can't see anything. Makes me sad. Wasted detail. So what have we got here? We've got a, a panel, some electric spark. We've got a dead body. We'll just take care of that first. Hmm. Huh, wonder what it's talking about. Anyway, let's hit this control panel and what's opening? I think he means the door. Anyway, um. Yeah, I wonder what that ammo was for. Well, um, handily enough, right beside us is a new weapon. A handheld grenade launcher. What's this doing here? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not complaining, and neither should you, Tom. So, uh, well, we'll get to use it in just a minute, but first got a couple of things to look at. Uh, we got this thing, which isn't really doing anything. So, moving right along, we get to the end of the catwalk, and we can see that it's all busted up. We can't get across to the other side, and that's because of the shipping container. It's mangled everything up and stops us from getting over there. I mean, there's kind of really no reason for this to, make, to be here, but I mean, I guess it keeps us on the straight and narrow and stops us fucking around. Wait, wait, there's a corpse on top of this container. How the hell did he get there? Can you hear that? Looks like we got company. Here it is in wireframe mode so we can see them kind of spawning and milling around. They are kind of making their way towards us but for some reason they've gone in some weird circuitous route and this guy manages to set himself on fire. What a champ. Okay let's get a look at this grenade launcher in action. So we'll get our bearings here. There's a guy. The thing about the grenades is that they're not uh, explode on impact. They've got a time release and it means they have to hit the enemy, bounce at their feet, and then the enemy kind of has to stay there long enough for it to blow up. And when it does blow up, it usually just knocks the enemy over. Um, if it's a zombie, you still have to go up and pop its head because if you don't, it'll just get back up again. So it's not really all that useful. This guy probably showcases all of the problems in one. The first one is that he moves really fast and outruns the explosion, and also the grenade can go between his legs and completely miss him entirely. So it's a case of just getting around all of these containers and getting everyone. I mean, not that much of a problem. Ah, fuck! Sneaky little bastard! So the door's right over there, we'll just leg our way- Oh, fuck! the guy in wireframe, he's not even part of the crew here, he just spawns whenever you get close enough. Ah, uh, gotcha. Ow, ow! See what I mean about the headless swing? I mean, you can do up to three and we get hit by all three of them there. If this had been the extreme mode, we'd be dead. We'll probably be dead in the first swing, actually. Yeah, it doesn't really matter that it's three, but yeah, it's, it's not fun. What the hell is that? Oh, wh whatever it is, it's gone now. I think I'm in that vent. Um, okay, well, let's welcome to the dark corridor. This is a very, very dark corridor, as you might be able to tell. Um, and yeah, we just came through this door. This is to the storage room. Apparently, there's no smoking, so why everything's on fire in there, I don't know. We're in the dark corridor, which has actually got an open floorway down to the ocean below, so it must be quite breezy in here. Anyway, did you see the door? Here it is. The only way you can really tell is by looking straight at it, and then you can see the light coming through the window. In wireframe mode you can see that the that's just sort of a little box that comes off it's just a lit texture but it's a very difficult door to find and i i didn't notice it until my test playthrough so let's go and have a look inside
Eat grenades, suckers! Oh. Okay, so we take. Oh, I mean, mercenaries are amateurs. Let me do it properly. And you. This guy on the table, he's he's not having a lot of fun. First of all, he's floating in midair. His arse isn't even on a seat. And he's he's not having a lot of fun. So we we should probably put him down. There we go. Go to sleep, little man. So anyway, this is the radio room, and we've got some some satellite photos of the Mediterranean and the Caspian Sea for some reason. And up here on the back, we've got ourselves a note that um, eventually I'll pick up. It's just one of Kamsky's usual fucking drivel things. I think it's probably another episode, maybe two, before we can start stop being all spoiler restrictive and stuff and start actually talking about probably what's going on. But uh, we'll wait until then. Uh, there's the note, and uh, there really isn't anything else in here. There's a health pack here, and since we're not going to come back, I might as well pick it up. <sighs> Here's some concept art for the room for um, two angles, and you can see that they did quite a good job. But that's it for the radio room, so let's get back out to the dark corridor. Ah, bloody camera. Alright, back in the dark corridor, and here's some concept art. Look at it with your eyeballs. Right, okay. Last thing I need is my light flickering. We've got a big problem here. We need to kill this thing, but it's really dark and we, can, we can't really live without the light. This pistol's doing fuck all. Maybe we should just switch to the shotgun and hope for the best. No, oh, fuck it, choosing using the vents. We can end up using the light from the ocean below to actually sort of illuminate, or at least, at least give us some contrast to find the thing. Unfortunately, it's run off the way we need to go. If we go down in the, the only other available direction, is uh, it's locked. We can't see it right now because we, we aren't shining the light on it, but that's a uh, lift to the habitation module. When it's locked, then we can't get in there, and we need to head back, so we're just kind of waiting. Oh, shit, there he is. What'll happen is that he'll climb in some vents and then he'll disappear at that end and just reappear somewhere else. So you always have to be on your toes. If he's alive, he could be anywhere, anywhere at all. Well, he's fucked off over there. We've, we can take the opportunity to leg it. Here's one of the tricks a dog likes to pull. If you don't know he's around, he can actually get the drop on you quite literally. If he lands on you, he takes off some health and then you have to sort of fight him off like you have with the zombies before. And believe me, if you get caught unawares, that can scare the shit out of you. But here's how you actually can kill him really quite easily, and it's with the shotgun. All it really takes is one shot to get him down, and then you just wait for him to stand up and shoot again. You don't want to shoot straight away, because he's got a couple of frames of invincibility, but once he's up, you can keep just, if you time it right, just keep shooting until he dies. The only thing that really becomes a problem is if you need to reload, but I got lucky here and uh, managed to catch him in the arse as he was legging it. But in the main reality, he's still alive and I'm still scared, so I'm going to go in this door. Do you hear that? That was an exocell. It's time to go hunting. Very subtle scare from the game there. It was just that electrical spark. Usually it would be a gigantic bang or something, but that was very subtle and yeah, well done. When you're creeping about looking for exocells, it can it can get you. Ammo and lots of it. Behind these shelves is another door, and that's where we're headed to. And there there are no exocells at all. The game's playing a dirty trick on us. We even had it with that zombie groan that happened whenever we came out of the captain's room that one time. Slow mo. No matrix allowed. We check that out in sexy cool wireframe. We see there's no actual guy there shooting at the zombie. We just get some disembodied muzzle flashes and then the guy himself spawns and rolls out. Stop that. So inside here we've got, oh, the event guy. He doesn't look like he's having a lot of fun. 
Um, I'm going to go out on the desk. Seems that they tried to barricade themselves in. We've got all this crap in front of the windows. and Why they didn't bother putting anything in front of the door, I don't know. But it looks like it wouldn't have helped anyway because the vent guy got gobbled up. There's not really anything more interesting about him. He's just sort of sat up there and doesn't jump down or anything like that, at least from my, what I can tell. Go to the guy at the desk and he's just sitting there. Here's another one of those camera angles that I missed. Nicely swoops around and reveals the dead guy to you. I guess it would have been scary if um, if it, we hadn't seen a million dead bodies already. This room is actually very empty. There's really nothing in here at all. It's just kind of a set piece to sort of show things off. It's a bit of a wasted opportunity. But out of this little, this appears to be kind of like the administration office. The room that was barricaded off was kind of like the overseer, I guess. But around here we've got some regular grunt tables and things, just computers. I swear I've had that computer case before. There's a weird little foot pedal bin under here with something on it. Looks like some sort of underground rail cart or something. And the obligatory water cooler. We can't go through an office environment without one of those. And the obligatory dead body. Can't go through any office environment without one of those. So yeah, we've just got bits and pieces, got whiteboards and stuff, and on this desk we've got um, a book about Russian radio transmissions and uh, what sort of frequencies to pick them up on. More about that book later. Sounds like someone's bored and didn't bring their MP3 player with them to work. Although it is 2004. I think I had one then. Did I have an MP3 player then? I had a CD MP3 player, that was a pile of shit. I had a mini disc player, but let's not talk about that. Back in the dark corridor, and we're gonna go to the right. We have to keep in mind that that dog beast thing's still running around. Let's see. Ah! Fucking asshole. He's run off as well. Still can't kill him, okay, but never mind. We'll try this door. No, never mind. I keep thinking this goes back to the sick bay. That door we couldn't get through there, but it doesn't match up. If you lay out all the pieces, it, it comes in at a right angle, and it's definitely not the same room. But we're gonna leg it up these stairs, and we're not gonna bother killing the dog this time. One thing before we do leave this area is, I just want to point out these electrical boxes again, we've seen them before. If we look at it in wireframe, we can see that the wire that hangs at the bottom is actually in there and coiled up, but you can't see it. Whenever you shoot the electrical box, it sort of goes blue and hangs down. It's uh, interesting that they, they didn't just spawn it, whenever you shoot it, it's actually in there the whole time. I thought it was a little weird. Oh, something sounds busy. Oh, we've got a bit of a big firefight going on here. We've got a couple of mercenaries against a few zombies. But if we go back to where we spawned in and just look through the wall, you can see there's actually only two. We've got one zombie and one mercenary. The thing about these guys is that they are both invincible and they will just keep on fighting and fighting and fighting. I guess they probably just had the two of them here because it would be much less of a noise to just have two fighting each other instead of having like six or seven NPCs just milling about. But whenever we uh, decide to walk around the corner it despawns those two and then spawns the actual ones that we can fight. And because we're going to catch them all unawares we can destroy them quite easily. Or we would, if the mercenaries could be counted to actually kill a zombie correctly for once. No, maybe we can set him on fire. Uh, no, never mind. Uh... Right, so, uh, yeah, let's try doing the vent thing again. Let's see if we can catch as many as we can. Yeah, that's more like it. Haunt burning carnage! Beautiful. So what do we have around here? We, we, we've always had the firefight, we've got a bunch of corpses to clean up, we've got another bony arm over here. But off in this corner is a, an, an exit to somewhere, we're not going to go there just yet, that's where we're going to end this video, we'll come back to it in a moment, so where we actually have to go next, but before we do that we have to kind of get the reason why we're going this way, so we're going to head back and we're going to take a look at another couple of rooms. 
If you look to your right, you'll see a door. We are not going there just yet. That's one of those secret hidden bastard doors, uh, but we'll get to that in the next video. So down here we've got two doors. This one is the one we're going to go into first. This is the main security room, or just security as the door says. And those two danger signs are talking about hard helmets and something about drinking water. I'm not sure what. Is it talking about me? Oh no, it's talking about them. Oh shit. This is not a test. I repeat, this is not a test. So now it's time for a brand new weapon. That's right, two in one video. This ought to heat things up. Oh Tom, you always know the funny things to say. Right, this test is baby out, it's gonna kick some ass. Uh um Okay. Oh fuck, this thing is shit! Ah These new weapons are crap! Okay, uh, here's what the concept art for the flamethrower is. We've got three things there. Eventually they merge the, the group from the top one with the main body of the second one and end up with this. Lovely piece of work. It's a shame the gun is crap. Well, kind of. Well, I'll show it again in a second. But first we're gonna have a little look around. We've got a printer and another printer and a bunch of books. Uh, we'll get to those in a couple of minutes. Bunch of little areas here, but nothing really in them. It's no wonder this guy's dead. Since he was carrying the flamethrower, they probably kicked his ass in seconds. Let's take a look at using a different weapon whenever we come in. We'll try it with the grenade launcher and actually clear things up pretty quickly. Because we know they all spawn over there, we just destroy them. This is not a test. It's blocked off. Think, Hanson. Think. But we still can't get out. Think, Hanson, think. As it turns out, the guys, for some reason, are in some sort of idle state. We have to run all the way over to actually trigger them off again. Don't know why that happened, but... Eh. And here's how to properly use the flamethrower, not like a spaz. Much better. Area clear. Doors unlocked. Over here we've got the only other door out of the place and it's to the communications room where the jammer is, but it's got a retinal scanner right beside it and obviously we don't have clearance. Great, it's locked. If we take a look at our objectives, we can get a bit more information on that. And apparently, Tom wants Anashenko's eye. What? So what we've got here is a bookshelf, and on that we've got, well, as you might expect, a bunch of books, as well as on one of the tables we were looking at earlier. So let's go through some of the uh, the textures that they use for some of the books. This is the first one. This is broadcast from abroad in the Russian language. This is all of the radio stations in the world that broadcast in Russian outside of the Russian borders. It just lists all of the radio frequencies and what sort of stuff they uh, broadcast. This next one's an interesting one. This is a book about a lost Serbian language. Uh, well, when they say lost, it's an endangered language. It's by a people called the uh, Udihi. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, but it's a book on them uh, in Russian with a Japanese translation as well. A very strange book. Following that up, we've got something that isn't strictly relevant to the field that this Orig is working on. This is Russian and Soviet coins from 1700 to 1993. And uh, one review says, My favourite book on Russian coins. I'm sure it's fantastic. This one appears to be the uh, manual for a Russian maritime radio receiver known as the uh, Volna K. Apparently it's something that was made in the 50s or 60s. This one is a book on the astrophysics of neutron stars. That's from 1987 and eventually got an English translation because it was quite popular. Got another book here on astrophysics. This one's called Problems in Astrophysics. And this one's a book about binary stars. This one's also just generally about neutron stars. 
These all seem to come from one particular web page about one particular author, so maybe it's all by the same guy, but uh, it looks like they just nicked a bunch of them and dropped them into the game. So what have we got up here? We've got the actual monitors and stuff for the security room. I guess it's got feeds into pretty much every area of the oil rig. Over here we've got some more ammo for the flamethrower, which I guarantee you we will really not be using all that much. There's only really one sort of case to use it, and that's on the, uh, the exocell incubators that create the exocells. Concept art for the room. Now this room is actually labelled as the grenade launcher room, so I think there was a bit of a weapon shuffle that went on, but we'll come back to that in the next video. Now the monitors themselves, uh, we're not really going to use them all that much. They come into play a little bit later on, but nah, not right now. There's some shots there, places we've been and places we haven't. I'll not really go into that because it's not all that interesting. So I didn't actually need to come into this room. There's no real reason to be here just yet. But this was to show why we have to go the way we need to go after this is that we need to get uh, an eyeball. Jesus Christ, can we not just coerce the guy, Tom? The fuck's wrong with you? That's nah, just a med kit. Okay, let's go off to this room and this is the incinerator. Let's see what's here. Let's have another reason why the flamethrower is a bad weapon to use. When we set the guys on fire, they still run at us and chase us around when they're burning, so it's it's very bad to use in an enclosed space. And that happens to be most of the game, so yeah, you'll not want to do that. Right, so let's have a look around. We've got some spear gun ammo over here. This is the only thing to actually pick up in this room. And over here we've got the incinerator itself. Inside we've got obviously the little nozzles and things where the flames come out. Whenever the flames aren't burning, it's got little bits of steam coming out, which I think is nice. And to actually operate it, we can use this control panel here. Concept art shows that the, the room is pretty different. The room in game's a lot smaller, and I mean, it's, it's like a door here that never comes down and stuff, and yeah. But what's most interesting about this room is how the AI sometimes performs in it. Watch the guy in the middle. You can see that he starts coming towards us and the last time he ran at us, but this time he, he doesn't. He stops and turns and walks back into the incinerator. We'll fast forward killing all these guys to get it out of the way and then we can have a look at our new friend a little bit more closely. He doesn't sound happy. You okay, mate? It's not all bad. I mean, we'll, I'll give you some privacy, you obviously, yeah. If we leave the room and then come back inside, he then resets back to just being a normal zombie. Here's a, another bit of a look at this guy. Sometimes he'll get stuck outside of the furnace for some reason. If we have a closer look at him, you can see that his animation apparently is, is hurting himself. He's like cutting himself. He's like a cutter or something. God, some of are weird. Well, there's only one thing to do when you've got a cutter zombie. To put him out of his misery. Or else he'll be cutting for all eternity. made me feel really sad now. I just, I just don't think I can take it. I, I feel like a monster. I'm, I'm just gonna have to end it too. That's what Tom Hansen deserves. I think part of the problem is, well not really much of a problem I guess. It's, it's just a, a weird thing is that the conflict with the zombies sets them so that only two of them can chase you at once. And we'll see an example of that now where we can kind of juggle between them. For some reason in this room only one will chase you at a time. The rest will just kind of stand there and wait their turn. One last look at the incinerator room and we'll be on our way. Gonna make our way back towards where that shootout was before, and we're gonna make use of our flamethrower. 
and see what happens there. And I'm going to tell you a little thing that my friend told me once is that during, I think it was during World War II, whenever they had flamethrower troops, the opposing side would go out of their way to kill the flamethrower guys first. Just because whoever had a flamethrower had to be a certain sadistic kind of person because to set someone on fire and then look at them and judge the situation and say, that guy's not burning fast enough, I need to top that fucker up and then apply more fire to the guy and watch the guy fucking burn to death. That requires a really fucked up person. And Tom Hansen seems like just that kind of guy. I'll see you next time. Next time on Cold Fear. She's not my girlfriend.